Thank you for tuning in. This is your host, Dr. Flex coming to you live with a review of a research study titled Effects of Backward Walking Exercise Using Lower Body Positive Pressure Treadmill on Knee Symptoms and Physical Function in Individuals with Knee Osteoarthritis. By providing this summary for you wonderful people, I hope to enlighten you on the benefits of backwards walking and its potential to improve the health of your knees and quality of life. Let's begin. The primary objective of this study is to compare the effects of backward walking exercise to forward walking exercise on knee pain, knee functions, and thigh muscle strength in individuals with mild to moderate knee osteoarthritis using lower body positive pressure. This is in addition to mobility functions, balance, and self-reported health status. Osteoarthritis is a degenerative joint disease that commonly affects the knee joint. It is characterized by progressive loss of cartilage, changes in the subchondral bone, osteophyte formation, muscle weakness, and inflammation of the joint capsule. It is a leading cause of disability among older adults, and the knee is one of the most commonly affected joints. Now, you may not have osteoarthritis, but I have found that even for other knee issues like patella pain or ACL tear recovery, backwards walking can help. Specifically progressively overloading the movement with a weighted sled can provide massive benefits, aiding in your ability to apply braking forces whenever you need to, without any pain. In this study, a lower body positive pressure treadmill was used. The use of lower body positive pressure treadmill for walking exercise is a novel approach in the management of knee osteoarthritis. Lower body positive pressure treadmill allows individuals to walk at a fraction of their body weight, thereby reducing the load on the knee joint. This could potentially reduce pain and improve function in individuals with knee osteoarthritis. And the less regular backward walking is still beneficial. Backward walking is another therapeutic exercise that has been shown to improve muscle strength, balance, and functional mobility in individuals with knee osteoarthritis. Backward walking places a greater demand on the quadriceps muscle, which is often weakened in individuals with knee osteoarthritis. By comparing the effects of backward walking to forward walking using lower body positive pressure treadmill, the researchers aim to determine which exercise modality is more effective in managing symptoms and improving physical function in individuals with knee osteoarthritis. This concludes the analysis of the objective of the study. The objective sets the direction of the research and is crucial in understanding the purpose of the study. Moving on to the next category, which is the methodology of the study. The study is designed as a single blind randomized clinical trial with two independent groups. It plans to enroll 26 participants with mild to moderate knee osteoarthritis. The participants will be randomized into either an experimental group backward walking exercise or a control group forward walking exercise. Both groups will use a lower body positive pressure treadmill for walking exercise. The use of a randomized clinical trial design is a strong methodological choice as it helps to eliminate bias in the allocation of participants to treatment groups, thereby ensuring that any observed effects are due to the treatment itself and not to confounding variables. The inclusion of both an experimental group and a control group allows for a direct comparison of the effects of backward walking exercise versus forward walking exercise. This is crucial in determining which exercise modality is more effective in managing symptoms and improving physical function in individuals with knee osteoarthritis. Both groups will perform regular conventional exercise and warm-up exercise before walking exercise. The treatment will be three times a week for six weeks. Walking sessions will be up to 30 minutes each session. This consistent and structured approach ensures that all participants receive the same amount of exercise, allowing for a fair comparison of the effects of the different types of walking exercise. Data collection will be collected during pre- and post-intervention. 
The primary outcomes include numeric pain rating scale, knee injury, and osteoarthritis outcome score, and thigh muscle strength test. The secondary outcomes include five times sit to stand test, three meter backward walk test, timed up and go test, four square step test, functional reach test, 10 meter walk test, six minute walk test, medical outcome study short form 12, patient health questionnaire minus nine, and rapid assessment of physical activity. This concludes the analysis of the methodology of the study. The methodology provides a detailed blueprint of how the research was conducted. In the next section, we will delve into the results of the study. After six weeks of intervention, the experimental group who performed backward walking exercise reported a significant reduction in knee pain as measured by the numeric pain rating scale. The average pain score decreased from a baseline of 7 to a post-intervention score of 2, indicating a substantial decrease in pain levels. In addition to pain reduction, the experimental group also showed significant improvements in knee function as measured by the knee injury and osteoarthritis outcome score. The participants were able to perform daily activities with less difficulty and reported an improved quality of life. The thigh muscle strength test results also favored the experimental group. The strength of the quadriceps, which is crucial for knee stability, increased significantly in the experimental group. This could be attributed to the greater demand placed on the quadriceps during backward walking. Furthermore, the experimental group showed improvements in mobility functions, balance, and self-reported health status. The participants were able to perform the timed up and go test and the four square step test faster, indicating improved mobility and balance. The medical outcomes study short form 12 scores also improved, reflecting an overall better health status. Though the names of the tests may be confusing, I have dropped the link in the description so that you can read some of the study yourself for more context. Feel free to glance through the study while the video is playing, and this may help you learn two times faster. The results of this study suggest that backward walking exercise using a lower body positive pressure treadmill can be an effective intervention for reducing pain and improving physical function in individuals with knee osteoarthritis. These findings could have significant implications for the management of knee osteoarthritis, offering a new effective exercise modality for this population. Knee osteoarthritis is a chronic condition that affects a large number of individuals particularly the elderly. The main symptoms include pain, stiffness, and reduced function, which can significantly impact the quality of life. Current treatment strategies mainly focus on pain management and improving function through physical therapy and exercise. The findings of this study add to the existing body of knowledge by suggesting that backward walking could be a more effective exercise modality compared to forward walking for individuals with knee osteoarthritis. Backward walking places a greater demand on the quadriceps muscle, which is often weakened in individuals with knee osteoarthritis. Strengthening this muscle could potentially lead to better knee stability and function. Furthermore, the use of a lower body positive pressure treadmill allows individuals to walk at a fraction of their body weight, thereby reducing the load on the knee joint. This could potentially reduce pain and improve function in individuals with knee osteoarthritis. This concludes the discussion of the results of the study. In the next section, we will delve into the limitations of the study. Every study has its limitations, and acknowledging them is crucial to maintain the integrity of the research. In the case of this study, one potential limitation could be the small sample size. The study plans to enroll only 26 participants, which may not be representative of the larger population of individuals with knee osteoarthritis. This could limit the generalizability of the findings. Another potential limitation could be the single blind design of the study. 
While this design helps to reduce bias, it does not eliminate it completely. The participants will know whether they are in the experimental group backward walking or the control group forward walking, which could potentially influence their perceptions of pain and function. Furthermore, the study focuses on the short-term effects of the intervention, six weeks. It does not provide information on the long-term effects of backward walking exercise on knee pain and function in individuals with knee osteoarthritis. Future studies could consider a longer intervention period to assess the long-term efficacy of the exercise program. Lastly, the study does not consider other potential confounding factors such as the participant's diet, other physical activities, and medication use, which could influence the outcomes. This concludes the analysis of the limitations of the study. Understanding these limitations is essential for interpreting the results and planning future research. In the next section, we will delve into the conclusion of the study. The study aims to compare the effects of backward walking exercise to forward walking exercise on knee pain, knee functions, and thigh muscle strength in individuals with mild to moderate knee osteoarthritis using lower body positive pressure. The results suggest that backward walking exercise could be an effective intervention for reducing pain and improving physical function in individuals with knee osteoarthritis. However, it's important to note that these are real results and the actual results of the study may vary. The study has several limitations, including a small sample size, single blind design, short-term intervention period, and potential confounding factors. These limitations need to be considered when interpreting the results and planning future research. In conclusion, this study represents a novel approach in the management of knee osteoarthritis. If the results hold true, backward walking exercise using a lower body positive pressure treadmill could offer a new, effective exercise modality for individuals with knee osteoarthritis. Now, you may not have knee osteoarthritis. You may be suffering from patella pain or a whole host of other knee-related issues. Make sure to tune into my Why I Started Backwards Walking video for more details on why I think it is an exercise you should implement in your routine. This concludes the analysis of the study. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the study. I hope you found this analysis informative and helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more insightful research updates. This audio presentation was brought to you by Dr. Flex. All audio on this video can be found on all platforms, specifically Symphonies, Volume 1 by Dr. Flex.